Well, this video we're going to run through pushing data from Node Red into InfluxDB version 1.8. And this version of InfluxDB is for 32 bit operating systems and it differs quite a lot from the 64 bit system. So let's have a look what we can see at the, on the screen at the moment. I have two Node Red projects open. This one here called House Zero is my Raspberry Pi Zero, so I have a flow that I'm working on. So this will be a video in the future showing you how to use I, I squared C sensors. Um, but uh, I have a project already here on my other Raspberry Pi. So this is the 64-bit one. Now it uses the same flows. We're just going to set this up differently on a 32-bit compared to a 64-bit. Export. Um, we can export our current flow, which will be InfluxDB simulation, and I will, I can export that to clipboard, and then I can go to my Raspberry Pi Zero project, and I can do an import, and if I just paste in here, it has my project from my other um, Raspberry Pi, so but it's going to come up with some errors because I don't have this node installed. So let's have a look what it's done. There we go, unknown node. Okay, so let's first of all, so we don't get confused, disable this flow. If I double click it, I have the option to enable it, disable it. And then I can see here that my influx DB out is missing. So I need to go to manage palette and I can then install, okay, so influx db, there it is. So I can leave that to install and then when it's done that my flow is ready to be edited to push the data into my 32-bit database. I'm most likely going to regret this next section, but I'm going to try and do this from memory. So, this is my flow. This is from copied now from my 64-bit Raspberry Pi 4, but it won't work with this instance of InfluxDB, so I need to do some editing. So if I double-click this icon, I can see here that I'm pointing at a server that is version 2 of InfluxDB. So that's see how we can make this work a bit more, better for us. So it's 1.8 and now it gets rid of the token and it's asking for my username and password which I'm really struggling with because I can't remember what they are. So I'm going to go and open InfluxDB and remember what my username and password are and put those in there. So if I update that it's probably going to do errors and what's the other uh, information it's asking for? It's asking for a database. So I can get that from opening my terminal and looking at my, my database. Um, and then a, a measurement name. So let's um, uh, open up the terminal and have a look at my InfluxDB settings. I've already recorded a video showing how to install InfluxDB and set up a database but there's some fine tuning that I need to put in place to make it work with um, Node Red. And the one thing I haven't done is I haven't set a password. And there's some settings I need to edit in the InfluxDB config file. So if you use this command, sudo nano, we're going to edit this text file. And there's only two commands that we need to, to change in here. So scroll all the way down until you get to HTTP. And the two options that we need to you know, uh, enable. So to do that, you just need to remove the hash. So we'll remove the hash here. And you can see now it's changed color. Is the, um, uh, the HTTP endpoint. And then the bind address port. Okay, so let's, um, let's do that as well. So we've got those two settings. And then control X to exit. And then to save, press um, Y and then enter to clear.
The next stage is to set up a user and a password in InfluxDB. Uh, that's part of the logon, logon procedure that um, the node red uh, function needs to start linking uh, sensor data into the database. So to do this, we can, first of all, we need to log into InfluxDB. So we just type in Influx, that tells us what version we're on. And then use this following command. Again, this is not a standard um, Linux command. It's an InfluxDB command. So create user. Um, and then in inverted commas, the username with a password of, we call it Raspberry this time. You need to make a mental note of these and then with all privileges. So if I hit enter on that, hopefully I've typed it in OK. So how have we been successful to, to test that? Just type in show users and you can have multiple users and we can see here PI true. Now we have a, a login, um, we need to, to set up a database. You can see there, I made a few typos when I was testing it myself. So go into the Influx DB program, so type in Influx. We're already logged in because we've just set the password. You can see, see that up here. If you want to create a database because you haven't got one, type in create database, all uppercase, space, and then give your your, your database a name. We've already done one. So if I have a look at my command here, show databases, and then hit return, I can see here that my database is called zero project. The next step is to populate this data into um, Node-RED. So if I open up Node-RED, just have a recap. The server has been set up. Influx DB 1.8. This is just a text name for it. I've called it House Zero because this is the uh, the um, Raspberry Pi Zero. And then your username and password, which we've just set up. I'll update that. And then on the database, I need to put this zero project into my database. The measurement flow meter will be automatically um, generated. This retention policy, I'm not too sure what that is, um, but I'm going to leave that blank so it auto-generates. Um, I think this may be how long it stores the data for in the database. I don't need a precision of milliseconds for what we're doing. Let's just make sure that that is in right. So zero project, you need to get the case right. I can dip that down, done. And... I can see here that I'm going to be generating data every one second. So let's deploy that. I have no errors. Let's just make sure that my payload is, is good. So let's clear this. And I can see my payload going into this is timestamp, temperature, and density. To, to see the, the fields that should have been auto-generated, you can sort of see here some, some commands. But if you go through these list of instructions, so the first one is to use the database. Okay, so use my zero project. So it's telling me here, use the database. Now I can show measurements. So if I hit on that, that is showing flow meter. Now if I jump around back to my node red, I can see here that my measurement was set for flow meter. So I'm happy that that's done. I'm also not getting any error messages here. So my fields are timestamp, temperature, and density. So if I go back to my influx DB, I can type in show field keys. And I can see here now that I've got floating points and there, there's my, my fields that it's generated. So I'm happy now. Data is being pushed into InfluxDB, but of course with this version, 32-bit version, I have no way of visualizing that. So just to summarize, if you want to understand what each one of these means, um, please look at the 64-bit
bit version of, of Influx DB. It's a longer video, but we go into uh, these nodes in, in more detail. But we've just cut and paste our uh, project from one Raspberry Pi into here, and then we've edited the Influx DB settings to push it into version 1.8, which is for 32 bit. And um, now that data is arriving, so we've run through some commands on how to see the fields being generated. And let's say, like, the next step is to push that into Grafana. So please keep watching this channel for that video. Um, as per usual, please click on the notification button because there's a lot more of these videos coming out. Tell your colleagues what you've seen. Hopefully you liked it. And hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening.